memorize, you share it. And uh, sometimes we do all of those things <coughs> without looking at how God looks at us and realize that there is a relationship here that He wants to have with us. The Bible tells us, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever, believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So God's got your back. Um, this past Christmas, my wife and I got a card from a long-time friend. Uh, and in that card it said, um, I'm praying for you to remember that God's got your back. And it continued, now that's what I call perfect back support. And I thought that was pretty good. Um, because for those of us who have had back pain, and maybe you were been blessed by not having to deal with that, but a lot of us have back pain. It's, it's very sore, it's very severe. <clears throat> and um, it, uh, it interferes with our lives, with our everyday function. And so it's a major thing for some of us who uh, find ourselves in that, um, in that situation. Uh, on that card also, and um, we, we, we kind of like cards. We read everything it says and then usually around Christmas time, um, our friends put a, a letter in there telling us about all they have been going through that year and the good and the bad and everything. But on that card there was also written, written the following words, found in Samuel, in 2 Samuel 22, 22, 2 and 3. 2 Samuel 22, 2 and 3. And it reads like this, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my mountain in whom I take <coughs> refuge, my shield, my horn of salvation, my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. Wow. With all of that, you got to agree God's got your back if, if he's all that to you. <coughs> And every day, each of us, we got up this morning, every day, um, we face our, our hopes and our fears and our pain. And whatever thing else is out there, uh, we're facing those things. Many of us live with back pain, as I mentioned earlier. But this, uh, this scripture is not applying only to back pain. It applies... Uh, to everything we do, to everything we are. And when we make the Lord our rock and our fortress and our deliverer and our shield and horn of salvation and stronghold and refuge and our savior, God's got our back. And, and these, two, these two things go together because as I said, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, doesn't matter who you are, what place in life you are, what status in this world you are, um, <clears throat> but whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And when we do that, all of this applies to us. God being our rock and our fortress and our refuge and our strength and our deliverer and all that, we can depend on him to take care of us that way. It does not matter what difficulty we're going through and uh, somebody might say, yeah, it's easy for you to do. You don't know what I'm going through. <coughs> no, I don't know what you're going through, but I know what I'm going through. And uh, when you're looking at this picture, you don't know what it is you're going through. Because that relationship exists between you and God and He can, it's nothing too difficult for Him to do. But we have to give him a chance. We have to give Christ a chance to take us over and work in our lives that we trust him and obey him. <coughs> uh, and when 
we do that, uh, Jesus can do such amazing things with us in our lives that He will surprise us. But it's so important to give Him a chance. You give Him a God a chance and He has your back. This truth is expressed in a chorus I heard long ago, and I'm sure a lot of you know it. The chorus goes, my God is so great, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. You, you, those are pretty strong words. And if we get that relationship with Him, Jesus says, have faith in God. And sometimes I think we forget that uh, and, and just go about our lives and try to do the things that we need to do by <coughs> ourselves, in our own strength. That won't work for me. So I have to depend on this thing, and this, this God that's so great, so strong, and so mighty, that there's nothing He cannot do. I have to depend on this God that has my back. <clears throat> and Jesus said in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. <coughs> For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my Sorry. yoke is easy, and my burden is light. My God is so great, so strong, and so mighty. There is nothing my God cannot do. He has my back, and he can have yours too. It's a story about Charlotte Elliot. <coughs> Uh, that I want to go through a little bit with you. Charlotte uh, was born in, on March 18, 1789. <coughs> and she grew up to be a, a very influential author. <coughs> but around um, the age of 30, she became an invalid. And I know most of us here don't <coughs> can move about, can do things. We might have a little pain here and a little pain here, uh, and uh, there might be even some who have much more than burden to bear than that. But she became an invalid, and uh, wanted to picture a person like that, an author that is uh, doing very well in life, that was young and vibrant, and uh, one day, all of that's taken away from her, at her age, but the ability to move around and to, to go to the uh, meetings that the authors go to and to, to, to continue to build out her life and to, to speak to audiences like she would. And at 30, all of that changed. And she became an invalid. And remained that way for the rest of her life. Now Charlotte wrote about herself in these words, my Heavenly Father knows, and He alone. And that's, the, that's one of the things we need to keep in mind. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Remember that song? Mm -hmm. Only you know, only I know the trouble I've seen. So she starts off this little piece with, my Heavenly Father knows, and He alone, what it is day after day hour after hour, to fight against bodily feelings of almost overpowering weakness <coughs> and languor and exhaustion, to resolve, as he enables me to do, not to yield to the slothfulness, the exhaustion, rather the depression, the irritability, such as the body causes me to long to indulge. But to rise every morning, determined on, on taking this for my model, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. 
That's this person that's been an invalid from the <coughs> age of 30, looking at her life that way. So she had a good life until she got sick. And one night at the age of 45, 15 years after she became an invalid, ill of health and unable to help in a fundraising, which was the kind of thing she did before, Charlotte could not sleep. And some of us, we have times like that too, when we have trouble sleeping at night. And in that time at night, somehow it seems like when you start thinking about stuff at night, it seems worse than when you think about them in the day. I don't know if that happens to you, but it happens to me, not infrequently. It seems like it's, it's so much worse when you're, when you're there and you know you should be sleeping and, and you have these things going through your mind. So she started doubting if she would be useful to the Lord. And that's a, that's, that's a dangerous place in our life when we start thinking whether God really wants us or wrong or whether uh, we can be useful to Him. The next day everyone went to the fundraising. She couldn't go of course because she was ill. She was left alone. And she thought of her weakness and realized that since salvation was not of works but of faith, her Christian life was also to be a faith and trust that God accepts the weakest of persons. This is a hard thing for some people. Their lives have been so messed up, they've done, they've neglected God all their lives, they've done things that it pleases God, that it pleases their family, and uh, they come to the place where they feel like um, God, did, God is no longer interested in them, that they don't have any use to God. But God accepts the weakest of persons. God can use the weak and the strong, the poor or the rich, the sick or the healthy. He can use you and me. He can use the homeless and the guy who lives in a mansion. There's nothing my God cannot do. God's got your back. <clears throat> if you give him a chance and believe on Jesus Christ, God's got your back. So that night when Charlotte was, I don't know whether she was sitting or laying down, but when she couldn't sleep, and when she realized that God was able to use the weakest of person, she took her pen and wrote the words of this hymn of commitment. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot, to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, <clears throat> fightings and fears within, without. O Lamb of God, I come, <coughs> I come. Just as I am, poor, wretched, blind, sight riches, healing of the mind, ye <coughs> all I need in thee to find, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, will welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, thy love unknown has broken every barrier down. Now to be thine, yea, thine alone. O Lamb of God, I come, I come. That, same, that song has been <coughs> sung throughout the world since she wrote it that night. And we sing it sometimes here. <coughs> Some of us sing it 
by ourselves sometimes as we talk to Jesus. And this morning I want to ask if, uh, have you come to Jesus yet? This one who can take care of you, who is your refuge and our strength, <clears throat> who is our Savior. Do you want to come to Jesus this morning? Do you know that God's got your back? If you decide to make a decision this morning on, on accepting Jesus and you want to come to him as this song invites us to do, um, just go ahead and come on down here uh, and um, <coughs> people will be happy to pray with you and, and welcome you to the kingdom of God. So let us uh, bow our heads, close our eyes, think about it for a minute or so and uh, feel happy, feel easy, feel free to come and make a commitment to the Lord. Not necessarily to this church, but to God, and then serve Him the rest of your life. morning to see you as you are, the one that so loves us, that so want to have fellowship with us, that so want to be your potter, to make us into the beautiful creature that you made us to be. And when we stray, and when the plan that you had for us did not work because of our disobedience, you send your only son to die for us, that we can regain that fellowship with you for which you long. Help us to realize, Father, how much you love us, how much you want to see the best things for our life, and help us to make you our refuge and our strength and our rock and our salvation, the Lord in whom we trust. <coughs> And our Savior. And as we leave this place today, let your Holy Spirit guide and direct us in the path you want us to follow. That we'll turn our lives over to you and turn our eyes upon Jesus and look full in your wonderful face. That the things of this world grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. That you give us the strength and the wisdom, and the power, and the knowledge to live a life, a life that brings pleasure. Oh, how sweet it is to know that the way we live can bring a smile on your face. <coughs> and help us, Father, to avoid the frown on your face. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.